here, everybody. Charlie here, rookie farmer. Behind us, we have a, I guess you're going to call it a fly control curtain. So, in this video, we're going to cover how to build this right here for your cows to help control the flies in their eyes, help control keep from pink eye. Um, and here we have a oil-based mixture with permethrin, and this is a wicking system. And in this video, we'll cover how it's made. All right, here we are. We have is the variety of parts and tools that uh, potentially we'll need. You know, basic hand tools. Um, you're gonna definitely need a drill, probably a drill at least with a half inch chuck, so that you can chuck in with a larger bit some wrenches, that kind of stuff to be able to work the pipe tap. But we'll just go over this items. So you're gonna need a piece of PVC pipe. This is four inch schedule 40. Do not use uh, schedule 20. You want the schedule 40 um, because it's much thicker wall and it'll be a much stronger fit. You can use three inch, but I like the four inch simply because it holds more uh, of the uh, material in it so I don't have to refill it as often. So this particular item, or one that I've, I've already pre-cut it to the size that I want, you could pretty much make them any size that you want. Um, it just requires more fittings, more uh, rope, etc. Anyways, um, for this one here, we're going to pre-make this one. Like I said, schedule 44 inch pipe. You're gonna need two schedule 40 caps, or excuse me, four inch caps. These are glue on. You're going to need some glue, PVC glue. Um, I happen to use the wet or dry stuff. Um, it's just a habit that I have. Um, so you're, you're gonna need, need some PVC glue, four inch caps. You're going to need, these I got, I believe at Lowe's. You pretty much get it at any one of the big box stores. This is half inch rope. This is double braid rope. So if you'll look at the style, it's not the three strand stuff that's twisted. Like so, do not get that type of rope. Only this double braid. It comes in nylon, or this one happens to be polypropylene. It's really soft, um, and it's basically got a core in it with a braided outside layer on there, um, and it works the best for wicking the material. So, um, depending on how high you want it, you need to pre-calculate how much of the rope that you're going to need. Um, I probably have more than I need for this particular size one, so I bought two packs of them. I said this is the half inch. Um, I found that the big box store it was cheaper than buying it on Amazon. Um, for a variety of these items that I'm going to show you, um, you know, the common PVC pipe, um, any nuts, bolts, glues, um, you can get those at your local big box store, zip ties or wire ties. Um, these particular fittings are special fittings. These are, um, these are basically, they call them, uh, liquid tight fittings. Um, the link will be down below in the description. This is for the half inch MPT and these are like cable clamps. Um, I'll go over those a little bit later on, but you're going to need one for each strand of rope that you're going to have. So I had, I bought, they came in. Uh, these packs, I think they were like 12 or something like that, 12 in a pack. So I bought two packs of them. Um, so you're going to need these liquid tight fittings. You're going to need a, this is going to, these are half inch NPT pipe thread that's on here. So you're going to need at least, I bought a whole kit, uh, but you're going to need a half inch NPT pipe tap. You're going to need, it calls for a 2560 force. But the 11 16th is more common, and, it's, and so it'll be a 64th under. Being that we're tapping plastic, I don't see that being a big big deal. So no need. I don't think you really need to go out and buy a special 25 64 or 45 64ths drill bit when 11 16ths is more than adequate for it. You're gonna need a, another drill pack so you can drill your pilot holes and then make them larger so you don't stress it with that big giant bit going into that plastic, you could potentially crack it. So you're gonna to wanna to go up, stagger in sizes. So you're gonna need another drill bit set. This here is a, like if you're familiar, this is a boat plug or it's a plug. So it's got a piece of rubber down here and then you can spin it and it makes it tighter 
So for whatever hole that you drill, this is what, and then when you fold it, it expands it and then seals the hole. So you'll want this for where you're going to put your fill hole for your pipe to pour your, uh, um, your uh, material in. Um, you know, you're going to want a permanent marker. I happen to have a black Sharpie here, some kind of ruler, uh, potential use for a round file. You know, this is a coarse tooth round file. Um, um, depending on how you're going to uh, strap, for me, this is going across a small five foot gate area. And I'm going to use straps on the tops of the post, like uh, uh, metal strapping material. And, and we'll be strapping it on the ends and then the opening of the gate, this is where they'll pass through right here. So if you wanted to make a longer one, you would need things like this. So I already have this for making a longer one. Um, for that, you're gonna need some silicone sealant. You're gonna need some uh, pad eyes. These happen to be quarter 20. And depending on the length, um, I would put one of these is every five feet on here if you're gonna make it anything over five feet. This one happens to be just a little bit over five feet, but the ends are gonna be supported over the pole. So the five feet stretch is fine. But I had, uh, you're gonna need one at each end. And then like I said, one for every five feet. You're gonna need some fender washers to fit those and extra nuts. So you're going to thread a nut on here, put a fender washer. You're gonna go through the hole in the PVC pipe, another fender washer on the inside and then another nut. And the glue, the RTV is to put in there so you can seal it. And the fender washers is to help give a much broader support versus that little nut on the PVC pipe. Um, I was gonna, I'm gonna be doing a, a cable system, so I'll be able to slide the uh, PVC pipe down, so I can, you know, be able to en enter if I need to without to try to walk through that stuff. Um, so if I did that, it's gonna be I'm using a, a piece of cable, and then make sure you get a turnbuckle. The turnbuckle is going to allow you to put tension on the cable. Um, and then, of course, if you need to do any cables, you're going to need some pinch clamps here to be able to pinch them off um, to lock the cable. So we're not going to be covering any of this segment of it. Basically, we're just going to be covering building this uh, PVC pipe. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to get started here. Um, this pipe is five foot nine inches and the opening that the cows will pass through is four foot nine inches. So the extra is for using it to strap it to the outer wood post, fence post that's been set at the gate opening. So I'm going to measure off of each end um, six inches, actually probably a little bit more, but I'll try to find my center first. And then I'm gonna use this printed line that's on the PVC pipe as my center line reference to the pipe. So all of my measurements will be off of that. They don't have to be perfect. Um, so, and then this, these fittings are going to be placed every six inches apart. So when you do this, you'll need to plan it out. You'll need to know how many of these fittings you're gonna need, etc. So make sure that you pre-calculate that out before you order. Okay, so I started with a um, quarter inch drill bit. And then I went to a half inch, and then of course to the 11 sixteenths. Now when you drill this, when you start getting into the bigger drill bits, be very careful because it wants to grab and dig really fast and really hard. It can be it can jerk on your wrist. So uh, depending on how powerful your drill is, this rigid can definitely do it. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead now and finish drilling all the rest of these, and we'll come back. All right, all of our holes are drilled with the 11 16 bit. So now it's time to move on and tap each hole with this. Now, fair, bear in mind, as you tap this, you'll want to run it in so far and stop because you want these threads to be fairly stiff to screw into this thing. So I'm going to stop the video and then we'll, I'll show you what I'm talking, how deep you can go with these fittings. All right, I have my first hole tap, and then this is the fitting. It has a seal and a nut, and I'm not going to use the seal either because uh, it's just not thick enough to, and 
I want to be able to tighten this thing on fairly tight so um, because this is where your rope is going to pass through so you don't want it leaking past around this you want it to be able to wick through the hole in general right here so anyways I'm gonna finish tapping all these and by the way for my particular tap that I have um, I'll provide a link it was a it was a complete set and it was fairly inexpensive it was a little bit more and it's a cheap tap it, you know tap and die set I don't really have much use for large pipe taps um, so I just bought the whole set because it was a few dollars more. I'll post a link for it. I believe I got it on Amazon and it's the whole set and it comes with the with that half inch uh, MPT. So whenever for this particular tap, I had to run it until it got to the very last thread. And then that made this still, once it gets in there, it's really tight. Um, and you can feel the, the, a decent amount of friction trying to turn it in there, which is what you want. So. When you start to do yours, if you have a different tap, or make sure you, you test these fittings, go a little bit and then test it again. Before, figure out how deep you need to go in the holes to make sure that you don't go where it's too sloppy. You don't want this fitting being sloppy in the hole. So anyways, I'm gonna finish tapping all these and we'll be back. All right, all of my holes are now uh, threaded for the half inch MPT pipe thread. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and cut all of the links that I need um, for here this particular one the the height where this is going to sit is right about five and a half maybe six feet in the air you know over the top so I'm going to cut my ropes to 66 inch links and when I cut each link I'm going to probably use a, a torch um, because this will fray out on you so you'll want to uh, melt the ends when you melt the ends be very very careful it's super hot it touches your skin it it's uh it will burn you very badly so i'm going to go ahead and cut my links and once i get them all cut and they're all uh, uh, seared at the end we'll touch base again i figured i'd go ahead and show you how i would do it um this is uh just a you can use propane, this happens to be uh, map gas. Um, same difference, this is an auto start uh, propane torch. What I'm going to use is I have an old uh, Sawzall blade that's no good, and I'm gonna use a torch to heat that extremely hot, and then it'll be like a hot knife. And then you can just go through your mark and cut right through it. And what it'll do, I'll show you the end, is it will sear off the end just like that. And then it's nice and hard and it won't fray out. It won't fray while you're cutting it, so you'll get a nice, good, clean uh, end on your cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, my links, and then we'll come back. All right, now all my rope ends are now done on both ends. They're cut to 66 inches. The reason I want it a little bit longer is that we're going to be have part of the wick will be inside the tube and then the rest will be outside. So sometimes you, it, when the cows get used to it, then you tie, you can tie knots at the very end of it to keep it a little bit of extra weight for wind, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these all through. And then once I get these through all the fittings, we'll touch chase back and we'll go over further. All right, we are back. So what I've done is I have all my fittings through here. Like I said, we don't need the, the nut and the seal that's on there. So I went ahead and pulled every one of them through. And then I've taken, like I said, you're gonna need a bag of zip ties. I used two, these are uh, eight inch. I got these, I think at Harbor Freight. And there's a hundred piece pack. And then I put two zip ties. Now make sure you put these zip ties on um, as tight as you can so that they don't slide. So what that does is it keeps it from being able to be pulled through the fitting. And it still needs to be small enough to fit inside the hole. So if you had to, if you had to change a rope for some reason that you could. So henceforth the reason why you're doing it like that. And it'll still allow the uh, insecticide mixture to leach through and wick down the, the actual tube. So what these do is they're when you tighten this cap right here, um, you tighten it down, it'll squeeze onto this rope really tight. So that's basically how you're going to throttle or control how much material flows 
through here. So when you first get it, you want, you'll kind of want to set all of them the same tension and then adjust to what best suits the flow that you need to come out of here. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and finish zip tying all these and we'll move on to the next steps. Unit. Okay, now where we're at is on the other side. I've already measured where I want to put my fill port and I marked it with the X here. It's basically 180 degrees out. So when it's sitting in its normal position, it would be the very top. So you want to drill the hole to fit this. Um, not everybody has large uh, drill bits, but for this particular plug, a, a 15 16 inch drill bit would work. Um, I've misplaced mine, so I'm going to use my rotary tool and I'm going to cut the hole. Actually, I'll probably use the next drill bit that I have and then I'll clean it up with this rotary tool with a burr and then a file. And I just want to make sure, you know, try to get the hole as round as possible so that this thing will fit in there and then you're able to adjust it and then tighten it down on to seal the hole. So we'll be back once I have the hole ready to go. Well, I did find my 15 16 drill bit. I didn't even step drill it this time with the different sizes. Went straight in with it nice and slow on the low speed and it drilled like butter. Anyway, so now that the hole is drilled, so you're able to put the plug in there and then you're able to tighten this up till it fits in the hole. Oh, pardon me, I gotta do this with another hand. And then you flip the lever and voila, now you have a sealed hole where you can actually fill it up. So, and then you spin this to take it out and you're ready to go and you can see down maybe in there yeah see there's the other hole so now that we have that all done we're going to go ahead and uh, start installing all our ropes and get those sealed into the holes now for those of you that's going to use like a cable system make it longer have the, the support eyes that we covered in the beginning of the video um you're not going to want to drill them through the end caps so henceforth why the end caps has been last so you want to do all those assemblies and bear in mind you may want to drill your holes for your pet your eyes to be on the opposite side of one of these holes so that you can get a you know a nut driver or something like that in there to be able to tighten it from the inside of the pipe and then of course so anytime you do that you want to make sure you're direct opposite of one of these holes when you put those uh, eye bolts in. So hopefully that helps you. Um, but like I said, we're not using eye bolts for this particular one. We're just using straps. So um, once the we could theoretically go ahead and glue our caps on and uh, which is probably, I'll go, I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. I'll go ahead and glue my caps on and then we're gonna go, go ahead and glue these and tighten these fittings into each one of the holes. So when I come back, we'll have the caps on and have, and I'll show you what I'm doing with the fittings. All right, we have two of them in so far. Um, like I said, I used the uh, wet dry PVC cement and I'll put, I went ahead and applied the caps um, on both ends. So if you've never done that before, you'll take the swab that's in there, you'll wipe it inside the fitting and then you put a, a band or so around. And you gotta work quickly with this. Um, the stuff dries really fast. So once you get that on you slide that cap on and then do the other end Don't try to do both ends and then put them on do one at a time um, I decided not to use this on these fittings even though these fittings are PVC. I didn't want to try it So I don't know if it works or not, but I happen to have You can use this the RTV the silicone uh, glue if you don't have anything else that will work just fine just make sure that you snug up your fittings here don't like hercules them on or you'll risk snapping them or stripping the threads or potentially breaking the pipe but you do want it to be snug against this so once that glue dries that they won't easily be uh, you know un unthread from there but i happen to have some uh tight bond it's a liquid gasket so it's fuel resistant as well and it has a solvent base in it to it that actually is um working just like this particular glue is but it gives me a much longer working time and it cures really fast so um, that's what i'm using at this point so i'm going to go ahead and finish getting the rest of these on and then we'll come back all right all our fittings are in with the ropes um, generally what i do is I 
take the rope while this is still loose here and put the rope in there because you, you'll have to fiddle with those zip ties to get them through the hole it fits really easy but you'll just need to do that and then um you know tighten these up a little bit so you can put your wrench i happen to use an adjustable wrench um, and it spins spins on really easy i apply the glue around the base at the very tip of the thread so as you're screwing it on there it, it can wipe the glue on all the threads and have glue on the internal section of the internal threads of this so now these are all done so like i said you see that it moves really easy with this loose but as you tighten these up then they quit moving see now it's not moving so this is what you use to control how much liquid flows out of this you know wicks through this wick system so that's basically how this all works so i have my hole at the top here so i'm able to fill it so now all i need to do is get my strapping material and go down to the pasture and strap this thing up uh, mix up my material as you see this is a fork this thing's uh, over five feet long so i i haven't done the math to figure out what, how much uh, volume of material is on it but generally i would recommend mixing up at least five gallons worth of your material and I'll show you the material that I'm the insecticide that I'm using and I'm going to be mixing it with a little bit of diesel fuel and most likely hydraulic oil um, because the material that I'm using uses it says to use a, a fuel oil or an oil um, there's other oil options out there um, like mineral oil but they're extremely expensive um, so it would be very costly so if you want to go the mineral oil route or you can buy the the oils that they use for those wipes I can uh, the, the normal wipes that's, that's available out there on the market now you could use that oil to pour in here um, there's you know whatever your choice is um, I've tried using uh, vegetable oil I didn't like the vegetable oil because the cows were constantly trying to eat the strips um, I guess the vegetable oil was attract, you know, was tasty for them. So I, I quit using the vegetable oil. So now I'm going to switch to a, a fuel oil and put in here. And but anyways, we'll come back when we have this thing mounted and go from there. Hey everybody! All right, I got this thing mounted. Um, I also leveled it. So you want to make sure you do use a level, and you're basically just going to level across the top. Make sure it's level so that the fluid will not right you know sit at one end or the other so here it is all i used was some uh, regular like pipe strap this is metal banding you can get those at the big box store and just some exterior screws screwing it down to the top of the of the piling there same thing this one was a little bit longer in height i didn't want to cut it so i just basically uh did the same thing it's got two screws um i also adjusted the height of the uh, of the lines I basically put some extra in here once the, the cows get used to going through this thing um, they're skittish for everything so when they get done I will probably tie some knots down in the bottom of it um, to give it a little bit of weight so when they walk through so what happens is the liquid comes through here wicks down into the string and then when they walk in it just basically is a, a wipe it rubs it on their face so anyways i gotta go mix up the batch of stuff and then we we'll get this thing filled up and get this uh ready to use for the cows all right this is what i got there's some inexpensive hydraulic fluid um you can use motor oil i've heard people use used motor oil you know you've already got your money's worth out of it so use it for something else um but i've kind of heard that it you know certain color animals it can stain their uh, fur so I don't know about that um, I'm only going by I just use this and I use those uh, at permethrin uh, you have to make sure that you get the stuff that's it, that's usable with oil um, I think they all are but this one specifically mentions uh, mixing it with oil in the instructions so basically I mix up five gallon buckets worth of it and then I can go out and fill the uh, the the pipe, you know, periodically check it, and then. Uh, but that's what I'm doing. So we're gonna go put some on there, and we'll be back. 
look at them they're already getting nosy um all right i have the the fluid the permethrin oil mixture in the uh, pipe and it's capped off as you can see right there and i loosen the caps up so it'll allow the oil to start wicking down once it's completely saturated it'll it'll maintain it a much better um, it'll eventually if it's too loose it'll be dripping a lot down here on the ground so you'll want to adjust these fittings so keep an eye out down on the ground where that's at so all right we have it finished um, i went ahead and tied knots down on the bottom to give a little extra weight to hold these down i've already went through each individual nozzle and i basically wicked the rope up and pushed the rope back through and then that helped saturate it and then pulled it back down i did get a lot on my hands and then snug down the uh, tension on these where you can just slightly tug on the rope and it ain't going to pull out so all the rest of these are all done like that uh, so what we'll do is we'll monitor this and see what the drip ratio looks like on the ground and then tighten as we need to so that's about it for the uh, fly control system please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one